Now we are going to start with the circulation. As you all know that transportation of substances is very important in the body because something is produced somewhere and it is going to perform an action somewhere else. So let's say that something is produced in my head and it is going to function here. So we need a medium or we need a transportation is very important because we need to transfer that substance from this place to this place. So that means transportation is uh, playing an important role again in a body also. So for that we have the circulating fluids, we have two kinds of circulating fluids, one is the blood and other is the lymph. So two circulating fluids or you can say two systems first, we have two systems which are involved in the circulation, one is the blood circulatory system, one is the blood circulatory system, other is the lymphatic system. In blood circulatory system, the fluid that transport things are blood and the, in lymphatic system, the fluid which transports substances is the lymph. So first we are going to start with the uh, blood circulatory system. So in that, uh, the circulating fluid is the blood. So this is what we are going to study here, that what actually is blood. So this is actually a sample of blood I have made that what actually we get in the blood. So we see that. Blood is formed of two parts or it is divided into two parts. One is the plasma, other is the blood cells. Blood consists of two parts that is the plasma and the blood cells. So first what is the plasma? First is that that what is the plasma? Plasma is the pale yellow colored fluid. Plasma is the pale yellow colored fluid which, is, which has approximately 90% of water. It comprises of 90% of water is there, 90% and rest 10% is the other organic and inorganic substances like hormones, enzymes, nutrients, proteins, uh, antibodies, whatever which is found in the, uh, whatever uh, we found in the blood apart from water that consists the 10 percent. So because the plasma contains these substances that is why it acts as a medium for blood cells. That means the uh, plasma is very important because blood cells remain scattered in the plasma and why they remain scattered because they get uh, the, the medium, uh, the plasma serve as a medium uh, uh, that is why the cells remain live. So that is that means we need a plasma if we want the blood cells to survive, so we need a plasma because it, the, due to presence of these substances it is acting as a medium. So this is what all the rest plays, this all the place which is weakened, which is uh, shown white, which I am drawing it black, is indicating all everything is plasma, everything is the plasma. And as I told you, what is plasma? A yellow colored fluid which is 90 percent water and 10 percent other substances and because it possesses these kind of substances, therefore it acts as a medium for the blood cells. So this is what is the plasma. Next, coming to the blood cells, so we see that mainly we have three kind of blood cells which are found in the blood. One, as you can see that this is the one blood cell, the other type and the other type. Only three blood cells are visible in this sample also. So blood cells are red blood cells which are commonly called as RBCs. We have white blood cells called as WBC and we have platelets also we have platelets also. Now we are going to study them in detail that to how they look like, where they are formed or likewise. See all the cells they are actually formed in the bone marrow that is the cavity of the long, long bones. They are formed in bone marrow by a specialized cells called as stem cells. So all these cells are formed in the bone marrow. So this is a common characteristic which you need to remember. So now starting with the RBC first that is the red blood cells. These ones are the red blood cells, these ones are the red blood cells. So how they look like? They are disc like, they are disc like and you know that they are actually incomplete cell, they do not have mitochondria which is powerhouse of cell, they do not have endoplasmic reticulum which forms a framework and although they do not have nucleus and moreover they do not have nucleus. So it is actually an incomplete cell. We say that it is actually an incomplete cell. But we have seen that RBCs are numerous, 
that is why the color of blood is red we all know that uh, the blood appears to be red that that red color is due to red blood cells so out of these three the numerous cells are the rbcs so rbcs are numerous in number you know that why they are red they are red because they contain a red color pigment uh, that is called as hemoglobin they contain a red color pigment that is hemoglobin and what is this formed of this is formed of iron it is formed of iron so the red blood cells are disc like incomplete cell they are numerous and uh, they contain a red color substance pigment in them that is why they appear to be red and that is the hemoglobin formed of iron and you know that the hemoglobin is just performing a important function it helps in the transportation of gases we already done in the respiration also that uh, whenever the hemoglobin wants to transport oxygen it forms a oxy hemoglobin complex and whenever it transports carbon dioxide it forms a complex carbino hemoglobin so that means it can actually transport gases by forming complex with them now where they are formed they are formed in bone marrow from Uh, stem cells and if somebody ask you that where they are formed in infants because in infants the bone marrow is not properly developed so they are formed in spleen only in case of only in case of infants only in case of infants and you know that what is the life span of rbc it is just 120 days approximate value is 120 days and you know that you must be thinking that whenever you are transfusing blood when you are donating blood so as i told you that rbcs are numerous so whenever you are donating uh, donating a blood that means a one bottle two bottle or three bottle don't think like that is your rb rbcs are lost from your body on that day it's not like that because their rate of formation uh, rate of formation is actually 10 times than the rate of rbcs that die or uh, the number of rbcs which are gone with the blood when you donate somebody so you, there's no uh, you can say there's no limit of formation because rbcs are numerous they are formed in very large number so they are formed in bone marrow from stem cells or in infants it is uh, in infants it is formed in spleen and you know that there is a special name other uh, other than rbc for rbc is erythrocytes that is erythrocytes so this is all about rbc now moving on to wbc now moving on to wbc so what we see is if we talk about wbc this is wbc this one this what i have made the irregular one it is wbc so as it is clear that it is of irregular shape it is actually a cell which can change its shape according to it needs so it is irregular in shape wbc is irregular in shape and uh, though you can see that uh, it is white in color so that means it do not have any colored pigment that is why it appears white so it has no pigment in it it has no pigment and moreover if we talk about uh, that what does it contain actually it is a complete cell it contains everything it contains nucleus it contains mitochondria it contains endoplasmic reticulum it contains all organelles it is a complete cell now there are different types of wbcs actually we see that wbcs are of two types one is granulocytes other is egg or granulocytes so as the name suggests they will have granules and they are they will not have granules so granulocytes are of three types granulocytes are of three types that is neutrophils basophils eosinophils and agranulocytes again of two, are just of two types and two types are lymphocytes and monocytes now what is the basic difference between the two the the difference between the both are that they contain granules and they don't they lack granules and moreover if we talk about neutrophils it has two lobes like the cell is like this with two lobes a structure like this basophils they don't have any distinct lobes so you can make like this and if we talk about eosinophils they have three lobes so let's say one lobe two and the three lobe lobe like this and when we talk about lymphocytes they are uh, big and spherical like this and monocytes are somewhat horseshoe shaped uh, just like uh, this kind of thing so this is what is the monocytes so these are the wbc and if we talk about their life span they they last for 
2 hours to 2 weeks. Their lifespan actually varies between 2 hours to 2 weeks. They can actually live for this span of time. And uh, if you talk about the function, the function of WBC is that they actually protect our body. They are actually called as soldiers of a body. They are actually called as soldiers of a body because they, they provide immunity to a body. They provide immunity. And what is immunity? It is resistance against disease. That means it protects us from disease. Now, how it protect, uh, protect us? Either it eat up the foreign particles which are infection causing, it eat up the foreign particles or it secrete certain substances which, which kill those foreign particles and those substances are called as antibodies. So, in both ways it is just providing the immunity that means it is just acting as a soldiers of a soldier of a body. So, this is what is the WBC. Now, coming on to the third and the other name for the WBC I missed it is the leukocytes, leukocytes. The third cell which we have is the platelets, we have the platelets. The other name for the platelets is thrombocytes now, and, and, we talk, uh, and we talk about that how they look like. So, actually how they appear to be, they are actually colorless, irregular in shape, may or may not have nucleus but uh, maximum times they lack nucleus actually. And you know that their main function is that, that they are going to synthesize certain proteins which are going to perform an important function that is the blood clotting, which is a very important task. As you know that whenever you get hurt sometime, so the blood starts oozing out. So you need to stop that blood because if you will not uh, stop that blood, then the blood will ooze out and it can cause a hemorrhage also because the, the unnecessary loss of blood is called as hemorrhage. So in order to uh, prevent that, in order to prevent that, the blood clotting is very important. The blood clotting is very, very, very important. So, it is being uh, uh, this thing done by the proteins and these proteins are synthesized by the platelets. And if you talk about the lifespan, it is around 4 to 18 days. The lifespan is 4 to 18 days. So, this is all about the blood. Now, uh, we will be doing that. Um, as you all know about the blood now, you know about the plasma, you know about the blood cells, everything you know. Now, we will start with another formula, this thing, the type of the blood groups. As you all know that as you have, uh, it appears that you all have the same kind of blood, but uh, but you cannot donate, uh, like I cannot donate to a person who is having a different blood group. So, that means blood groups also matter a lot. So, now we will be taking up the blood groups.